Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Michelle Corsmo. So we have a full day of convention event in front of you. Exhibit halls are open today until 4.30 with the Wholesaler Iron Mixologist competi competition taking place in the Mediterranean Exhibition Hall from 12.30 to 3.30. I'm super excited about that. And don't forget, lower level and traditional suites are open until 5. And now it is my pleasure to bring you our very own brand battle. We want to bring something to the wholesaler that the wholesaler doesn't have to sell. We are leading the way in the premium classic canned cocktail space. Cannabinis, the perfect wine pairing for the cannabis lover. Wom nous en fait avec con qui fait la caille. The product is the same even if the process is different. Field to glass. It's from our fields to your glass. Tonics, gingers, and soda waters, perfectly designed to complement any range of premium spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your brand battle MC, TV host, actor, producer, and 2018 brand battle winner, Marsh Maktari. Brand battle, everybody. Uh, I guess it's a little bit like The Bachelor because we won it last year and now I'm, anyway, I'm hosting. So very lucky to win this competition last year. And I can tell you firsthand what a cataclysmic impact it had on our business and, and on my life. Uh, to have distributors like titans of the industry come to us is a complete game changer. So just know that somebody's life backstage, I mean, their heart is beating like crazy, is about to change forever. So what, what is brand battle? It's a unique shark tank style competition for brands that have been selected through an extremely competitive application process. They're going to pitch their brands live on stage with nothing more than a bottle in their hand in front of industry titans. So who are the brands? Well, you can find the brand bios in the app or in the, uh, the brochure right in front of you. We had a lot of high quality entries this year. And on page 11, you can have a look at uh, some of the honorable mentions. But we can only pick seven of them to go live on stage. So please check them all out in that booklet. All right, so here's how the brand battle is actually going to work. Each competitor will get only five minutes live on stage. And then the industry judges will get about six minutes to give them questions and feedback. And at the end, you, the audience, will get to vote. And the judges' vote will be about 50%. So let's get started, should we? Let's introduce our industry judges. Please join me in welcoming co-chairman of Breakthrough Beverages, Charlie Marinoff. <music> TV personality and restaurateur, Bill Rancic. Co-CEO, Principal Managing Director, Horizon Beverage Group, Sam Rubenstein. <music> Vice President, Supplier, Business Development, Republic National Distributing Company, Mark Sachs. Welcome, Mark. Good to see you. CEO, Young's Market Company, Chris Underwood. Executive Vice President, General Manager, Wine Division, Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits, Steve Slater. All right, judges, thanks for being here. I, I got a quick question for you all. What are you looking for in a hot new brand? Because, you know, we won it last year, I get it, I get it, you're looking for Grey Whale Gin, but, but what are you really looking for? What, what, what's going to capture your attention today, or what are you hoping? 
Well, there's so many categories that are being presented. It just depends on what the category is. You know, there's there are exciting new gins and nice, exciting new craft spirits and yeah. there's mixers and everything else. So we're going to see a lot of things today. I think authenticity is very important too. It's got to be, you know, something that's they're passionate about, that they believe in, and and that's marketable. Yeah, fantastic. I I would say reason for being there. You really need to be thoughtful. There's a lot of product out there. There's a lot of good product out there. And there's a lot of room for new product. But there's got to be a real reason for you to be there because it is an unbelievably competitive market. Without a doubt. Thank you. All right, so should we get started? Let's take a look at our very first competitor. <laughs> James T. Kirk Bourbon Whiskey. No. Representing James T. Kirk Bourbon Whiskey, Chief Operating Officer Ryan McLeaven. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having us. This is such an honor to be here, and I really mean that. I don't mean it's just an honor to be nominated, it really is. Um, to be on this stage is pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to pitch a little bit different. I'm going to talk a little bit about our product, but just a little bit. Um, what I want to talk about is the brand, because it's not enough just to have a good product. You have to have the brand. Um, all of y'all sitting up here, you know how many times a, a supplier has come into your office and said, hey, listen, will you take my brand in and devote all your resources to it and your manpower and everything else and build my brand for me? And I'm not going to come to the market and work, and, you know, but can you build, build my brand for me? So, we're more than just a product. We are a company that is a licensing company, we're a branding company, we're a marketing company, and we're a data company. I'm just gonna give you a couple of numbers. Um, $3 million in sales in the first six months that we were in business. Um, 16 million active social media participants in some sort of Star Trek platform, and access to those. Um, uh, the, the fact that when we launch a brand, we have uh, CBS, Showtime, um, uh, uh, the celebrities behind the brand that are tweeting out and posting and getting our brand uh, visibility is what makes the brand palatable to the, to the customer. You guys don't have to do anything to sell these brands. We drive James T. Kirk bourbon to your customers. We drive customers to James T. Kirk. Um, listen, it's, in this day and age, it's not that tough to find good liquid. Like, there's good liquid out there, there's good packaging out there. Uh, unfortunately, there's people in this, in this um, convention this year that might not be here next year. Um, and because it's not good enough just to have a product, you have to have a brand behind the product, you have to have something that, that has velocity on its own and can create velocity on its own. Um, this is one of those things that, and you saw it in the package earlier, we want to bring products to the wholesaler that the wholesaler doesn't have to sell. We want you guys to be able to have a little bit of residual uh, revenue that you don't really have to think of. It's sort of that uh, distributor mailbox money, if, if you will. Um, because we know that you guys have um, commitments from your larger national brands. You have priority brands. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys who right now are paying the bills until we're one of the big guys. And so we want to put our products into portfolios where we can help drive their business for them. Because here's the thing. Um, it's really important to make something that is tangible to the customer, to the end user. But I think that suppliers um, traditionally have really not thought about the interaction between the wholesale level and their product. They just want to, their product to get to the, to the end user. And so they create products that are good for the end users. But our products are, are great for the wholesaler because they have pull through in and of themselves. Um, so if if you can imagine when um, we launched this product in June of 2018, June 27th to be exact, and in the first 72 hours we had collected 250,000 emails through our website. And that happened because CBS sent out a, a press release, and then Star Trek.com put it on the top of their page, and then William Shatner sent out a tweet. And so we're not just a product company, we're a branding company, but we're also a data collection company too. Because we can take that data and we know where your customers live. 
if you are a wholesaler in Houston or you're a wholesaler in Minneapolis, we know how many James T. Kirk Bourbon fans are there. And by the way, we know <coughs> their disposable income, we know how they spend money, and that they spend money. And so I want to step back just a second, and that's kind of how we do our business. Um, but it doesn't matter if this isn't good. So when we started the, uh, the whole process of, of uh, um, <clears throat> concepting this first product with CBS and Paramount, um, we first talked about a big glass bottle that looked like the Starship Enterprise. And they really didn't care what the liquid was, just put anything in there. And our team st stepped back and said, no, we want to make a serious product. We want a bourbon that looks like bourbon, feels like bourbon. This is heavy glass, screen printed bottles. Uh, this looks like something you would see in the bourbon aisle. And furthermore, we want it to taste like bourbon. And we want it to taste like really good bourbon. And I think that's what we've done. Um, and because in the licensing business, in, in this type of, uh, of product, the Star Trek fan's going to buy one. Whether it's shaped like a Star Trek Enterprise, or Starship Enterprise, or it's shaped like this, or whatever. They're going to buy one. How do you get them to buy the second one? How do you get them to make that their house brand? So that when they are sitting and in, in, in watching Star Trek, that that's what they're drinking. Whether it's the vodka, the bourbon, or, or the scotch. That's their house brand. But, and here's the big, here's the big question. Can you get the non-Star Trek fan to buy this bourbon? Well, our number one market is the state of Kentucky. And they know a thing or two about bourbon in the state of Kentucky. And this thing flies off the shelf in the biggest retail chain in the state of Kentucky. And most of those customers are not Star Trek fans. Ryan, that was amazing. Right on the five minute queue that you just- He gave me this look and I was like, he's giving me a look. It must, it's I must impressive. be out of time. <laughs> well, judges, any thoughts, questions? Yeah, great job. Thank you. So, Charlie. I am definitely a track, eh? The original. <laughs> I, would, I am buying the first bottle, and you asked the great set question. Why would I buy a second? And that will be, mash vodka? That was the most fun, amazing phenomena. Everyone bought a bottle. Couldn't sell the second one. So I think it is brilliant. I think you will do business and I think there is a sustainable business because I think the truck, there is a group of people who will gravitate to it, but I think in terms of building a large spirit brand in how we think of it, it will be more challenging. But I think you have a real business, and my question is, what scale? Do you have scaling issues because how you scale, are you buying this and you can relatively make money regardless of the volume, or will you have scaling issues? It's a great question. And so part of what we do in our analysis is when we launch a brand, we, we, make, we make it visible through our website first. And however much we get pinged, we can predict the velocity of a brand within the first 72 hours. We can know if this is going to be something. So when we launch a product through the Predator franchise or Die Hard the movie or any of the other IP that, that, that we own, some of them do better than others. This is a flagship. I mean, the Star Trek fan is voracious. And so we know that this is a velocity brand. We know that the things that we put in this franchise. And so to answer your question about scale, we, we take all that the, all those analytics on the front end, and we build original inventories, and then, and we already know that, that those customers are gonna buy. So there's no risk in building 10,000 cases when you know that 10,000 cases are, are basically sold. You did three million, you said, in the first six months. Can you break down where the three million came from? So we had, in addition to, um, in terms of products or geographies? No, or no. I mean, was it just, Target, like where were, the, where were your biggest sales? How did, where is this located now? I'm curious. So Online? Near, nearly all through retailers who do a lot of online business. And so, and that's kind of, we have this bifurcated approach on how we go to market. So it, we, we have the, the product available and it has visibility and we direct customers to a couple of online retailers that can ship it within certain states. Sure. And then we go to market in a more traditional way, brick and mortar, and, and set up our distribution networks. And so really that visibility that we get is what kind of kickstarts the brands. But, we, but, but then you see the, the major volume is in their traditional channels. So, so we're in six states right now. Got it. To, so to kind of add on to Charlie, do you have the juice already 
or are you waiting to see that projection and then going out and sourcing it? And are you concerned about consistency? Little column A, little column B. So we own some barrels, but then we also source some barrels. Um, and we are lucky that we've got great relationships in Kentucky. Um, we're, we're, a, we're a southern company and with deep roots and ties to Louisville and Lexington. And so we're very fortunate that we've got some pretty deep uh, wells of source when we need it. So you, know, go ahead. you said you're a data company. Uh, and to Charlie's earlier point, I'm just curious, because uh, I agree that the name, the brand, uh, you will get that first purchase. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have any idea or any data that you can share about your reorder rate at this point? Yeah, so, and, and we see that too. Well, when it's done online, we can see that. But I think we have to make some anecdotal assumptions when it's done in a traditional brick and mortar environment. So when you have somebody who pulls a bottle and then you see that same, you see that same store that's ordering you know, three cases at a time, five cases at a time, 10 cases at a time, your situation where you either have a clerk that is behind it and is pushing it, or you have some reorders that are coming through. So we can make some anecdotal assumptions about that, but all of the real data that we have is when we see that interaction through a, through a, a platform, that, through our, our, our website. I think Charlie's question was the right one though, and, and Mark brought it up too. So what's gonna get that second bottle purchase? And there's gotta be, you know, what makes this liquid, or what, what makes it authentic? What's, what's in the bottle? Okay. Uh, uh, would be more what you should be thinking about, I think. I don't think, I, I think that's true, but I don't even think it's, I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's not just the second bottle from the fan, I think it's how do you get the bourbon drinker to drink it? Because there's a finite market for a Star Trek fan. And, and that's why we have IP across all kinds of different um, uh, entertainment. <coughs> uh, um, uh, so Charlie's your bottles. target consumer. I mean, he's the Trekkie, right? He's, he's the first bottle, right? So, but when you taste it, well, what did you think of the bourbon? I haven't even tried it. Yeah, it's yeah. only 8.30 in the morning. I gotta have some. I think yours so. is over there. <laughs> Ryan, I've got a question. Yeah. So, celebrity endorsements are often difficult. This, mm -hmm. is, this is different than a celebrity endorsement. This is a, a character endorsement, if you will. James Tiberius Kirk. We right. all relate to it, right? All of our age group does. Not sure my 30-year-old kids would. Um, <laughs> What is the involvement with CBS and Paramount? Are they partners in this? And what is their part of the endorsement? Are they going to be featuring, focusing, and, and, uh, and promoting this product? It's a great question. And each licensor has different levels of engagement. Um, and so this is a licensed product. They're not really partners in it. They, they, they get a royalty off of sales, but it's a licensed product. And we get the right to use. Basically, they say anything that's involved with spirits, run with it and you guys can create it. Of course, we need their approvals. Um, you've worked in television enough that you know that how the approval process yeah. goes. And so everything goes through an approval process, but some licensors support it at, at different levels than others. CBS, because we're talking about uh, Star Trek right now, is one of the best partners we have. They're super supportive. They push through their socials. They push through their email list, which is vast. Mm -hmm. um, and and they're, they're a really great partner to have. But see, the interesting thing is, is so, even though James Tiberius Kirk, James T. Kirk, is owned by CBS and Paramount, we own James T. Kirk bourbon. So once it becomes a different sort of sub IP, then we own this brand. So and it's, a, it's a really great arrangement. And in the licensing part of it, I think that's one of the things that we do best. And that's why in you know, less than two years time as a company, we have over 300 licenses um, and like names that you would all know. So someone who is in the restaurant business, how would you pitch me in, in bringing this on premise? I mean, I, don't, I just don't know at, at our, our RPM restaurants if this would be something that so would my back, happen. So <clears throat> my background was in on-premise. I started in on-premise. Yep. Um, I was an old Gallo guy. And so the, the way that you get, I mean, it's fun. It's fun. Like, I, that's the, it's fun and it tastes good. So it depends on you know, who you're pitching it to. Am I pitching it to you at the top? Am I pitching it to the bartender? Am I pitching it to the staff? Am I pitching it to like, the craft guy that fancies himself as a, as a bourbon fan? Um, I'm pretty confident of what's in the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, it's good bourbon. And meanwhile, it's fun. And it's a great looking package. Um, yeah. I, I, think, I think that our team did a really good job with that. They and did. just as a, as a side note, People ask me about the shape of the bottle, and if it didn't tell you this, you wouldn't know, but now everybody will know. Uh, it's, it's, it was intended to look like a younger version of, of uh, uh, William Shatner's torso. So if you, <laughs> if you look at it, it looks like Captain Kirk. <laughs>
Not today's no, I'm Captain I'm not sure Kirk. I got that. <laughs> I, I said the original series. The package is great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it is very nice. Yeah. Well done, Ryan. Thank you. Great Appreciate job. It. Good job.